cult of Dusty. Humilitant, atheist, virulent, anti Jesus, anti Christ, anti Holy Spirit, atheist. I have a blasphemy challenge for you. You remember the blasphemy challenge back in 2010? I got a challenge for you, motherfucker. Are you game to take it? Or are you too chicken because you really do believe in God? Let's find out. First, let me introduce y'all to Cult to Dusty. Hey guys, what's up? Dusty Smith here, and I'm really happy today because I'm about to win $100,000. Some <laughs> fat idiot on the internet put a $100,000 atheist challenge out claiming he will give me $100,000 if I can simply prove God does not exist. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. You're probably thinking, Dusty. I'm, give, I'm, I'm about to give you a chance, Dusty. How can you prove a negative? You can't prove something doesn't exist. It'll be like me asking you to prove that there's a giant pink unicorn behind you that doesn't exist. How would you prove it? Obviously, if you're the one making a claim that a giant pink unicorn exists, it's up to you to prove it, not somebody to disprove it. This is basic childhood logic. I mean, obviously, the whole thing is childish and ridiculous. It's like me coming out with a $100,000 challenge to prove the Smurfs don't exist. How the hell would you prove the Smurfs don't exist? I'd really like to see you try because I want to know what's going on there. It's a whole village of dudes and one shit. Are they all fucking her or is it just Papa Smurf? I want to know, man. I want to know what's going on in this situation. But obviously, I... All I had to do is find, go to the person who uh, came up with the Smurfs. Bam. That's how you can prove the Smurfs are near, not real. I can't, though, because you can't prove the Smurfs don't exist, just like you can't prove anything doesn't exist. This is obviously just some idiot's attempt to shift the burden of proof onto somebody else. We can see right through this. Okay, I can see throughout through your bullshit, Cult to Dusty. I got a fucking challenge for you. Now, let me set up the challenge first. Let's see this video. God's preachers. Yes, I get. Are chosen vessels. They appear. They have been sanctified. God's preachers are chosen vessels. They have been set apart. Are sanctified to preach His word. You had better be careful to speak a word against a true servant of God. You accuse a true servant of God, one filled with the Holy Spirit, of operating under the power of the devil, and I believe you are over God's deadline. I am not going to speak evil of any preacher who is winning the loss to the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe that this Bible teaches that it's possible for a man in this hour to step over that line. Never will I forget when I was in a city, a certain city in North Carolina, conducting a great revival meeting. And one of the deacons who lived next door to one of the professors there in the high school asked this professor to come to the revival meeting, the big tent meeting. This professor scornfully ignored and begin to curse and to swear and to accuse me of being of the devil and in that city only for money and that the poor stupid people that were coming down they were coming under the hypnosis power of J. Harold Smith now neighbors for your information I know nothing about hypnosis and I do not and I am not a person that can hypnotize another person but he accredited the work that the Holy Ghost was doing in that city to the work of the devil before that professor could make more one more round. He was cutting his grass when that deacon invited him to the meeting. Before he could make one more round with that lawnmower, he fell dead in the yard. Only 29 years old. Let's see you do that, Colt the Dusty. Let's see you blaspheme the Holy Ghost like that. I mean, truly blaspheme him. Say he's, say all the Christian, say all of the works of Jesus in the Bible, accuse them of being of the devil. And do it openly in a video. Openly, do it openly for all to see. And let's see how. Uh, let's let's see. Hold on, give a second. I'll get to the point because this preacher says, "Listen, I have preached in all fifty of our beloved United States, and last year I had the honor of preaching in my sixtieth foreign country." And I have almost a universal worldwide radio program that I preach seven days a week on. And I've never known a woman to commit this sin. 
never met nor ever had in my meeting a woman to commit this sin. In all of the millions that I preach to, I've never had but 21 men to commit this sin. Not a one of them lived 24 hours. When you commit this sin, God kills you almost instantly. Almost within the hour. And if you look in the Bible, he did that. Called the destiny, you want to prove that God doesn't exist? Or at least prove this man is lying? Let's see you blaspheme the Holy Ghost like this. I'll, I'll play the story for you. And let's see if you live longer than one fucking day. Now, true, I granted, I had a preacher named Bo Dunford. He said he's known people who blaspheme the Holy Spirit. And not one of them lived longer than three days. Not one day, but three days. Well, that being the point... Let's see if you can do this cult of dusty in the last four days. Listen. My friends, I want to tell you, you can laugh at God. You can make fun of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you can mock, my friends, the church of the Lord Jesus and maybe get by. But when you begin to accredit the work of the Holy Spirit to the work of the devil, you're getting on thin ice. Never will I forget that night. Yonder in South Carolina... When I preached, given the invitation, and I saw a young man stand up on the very back row in that church and look around over the audience. I walked out of the pulpit and down the aisle, and in a moment I was standing immediately in front of him. And I said to him, son, do you know the Lord Jesus Christ? And with a look of hatred, he looked me in the face and he said, preacher Smith, I didn't come here to hear you preach. I didn't come here to get saved. He said, I came in to pick up a couple of girls to go to a dance, and as soon as I can find them, you can have our space. I said, but son, the Holy Ghost sent me back here to speak to you about your soul. He, with a wild look of an animal and with a hatred of a devil, looked into my face and said, I told you I did not come here to get saved. You and the Holy Ghost both go to hell. God said, get away from him. Don't speak another word to him. He stepped over my deadline. He's blasphemed against the Holy Ghost. He's committed the unpardonable sin. I walked back up into that pulpit. I pointed in his direction and I said, Folk, that young man has stepped over God's deadline, committed the unpardonable sin, and is doomed and damned forever. Right out loud, he said, Oh, yeah? He got his two girls. And one telling of the story, he says, and, I, and I, God's going to kill him. And one version of the story. Goes went to that dance. That was about nine fifteen. He said, "Oh yeah." He got his two girls. Went to that dance. That was about nine fifteen. But about five minutes of twelve, he and his companion or buddy stepped out on the little porch of that dance hall to smoke a cigarette and to take a drink of liquor. They lit their cigarettes, and his buddy opened a flask and took a drink. Handed it over to him, but instead of him taking that bottle, he fell on that porch, screaming like a wild animal, rolling and tossing and tumbling in pain. When they called the doctor, the doctor arrived, recognized him as being the young man that stood there and defied God and spoke out against the Holy Spirit. And he found no cause for his death. Less than two hours after he had blasphemed against God's Holy Spirit, he was in hell. Two young men drove up riding piggyback on a motorcycle in front of a Baptist church. Cut the dusty. Do you re are you really an atheist? There, there's your chance to prove that God is not real. Are you game? Or are you chicken? Stupid ass.